down what playmaker means a little bit more. Any examples that really stand out to you as far as why he's such a special player? Well, there, there's a lot of things, I think, going to make him a special player. Obviously, ability, <clears throat> uh, his intelligence, his understanding of the game. Uh, but, but the thing that really stands out with Jameis that separates him from a lot of guys is unbelievably competitive. And, and the tougher the situation, the more competitive the game, the better he plays or, or the better he has played to this year. You know, it's, he mentioned or, or the last question was asked about Oregon starting fast and scoring. And, uh, you know, we've talked all year about starting fast and finishing strong and proves the team's half listened to us because we finished strong, but we haven't always started fast. Um, but, you know, We've been in the situations where you had to come back when chips were down, <clears throat> and the guy always plays well when, when we're in those situations, always plays well. And I think that's probably what some of the Oregon players were alluding to, is when the situation came up with the drives, you had to score, you had to have things done, he's made the plays every time. Um, scares you to death as a coach to live that way. But uh, you know, fortunately, we've been able to get there and, and, and get it done. People look at his numbers, and he's taken a lot of heat, and there have been a lot of questions about the picks. But a year's experience, and you see him every day, how is he better than he was a year? Well, you also got to understand that, sure, there have been more picks, and the numbers are down a little bit. Um, but we also lost a first-round draft pick at receiver. We lost another senior receiver that was a really good player. Um, you know, Coach Dossie can – it has done a phenomenal job with uh, Travis and Ehrman, but we are playing with two freshmen. And um, uh, there's been some situations where Jameis has gotten a little bit impatient. There's, there's a few times he's made some bad decisions. There's a few times that um, he hasn't always gotten what he expected out of those guys, I would say. Um, you know, and the numbers aren't quite the same, but, but the guy's a better player this year. You know, he's... Uh, numbers can be deceiving, you know, but um, he, he's really played well. We, How do you see that he's a better player? What do you think? He's learned to be more efficient. He's learned to, um, you know, last year um, there were certain situations if you ever saw a guy one-on-one, -on -one, you knew you could throw it to him because he was usually going to win. You know, this year we haven't had quite that luxury of just saying, well, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, throw it to him. You know, you, you've, it's it's, it's – Forced him to be a little bit more of a, you know, a read the defense guy, taking the layoffs, things like that. There's no question it's been a work in progress, but he, he's made huge strides that way as the season's going on. Lawrence, so how much of a shot have you seen? How much of yourself have you seen of a shot uh, over the years? Uh, not a lot. He's so much more a better player than I ever was. <laughs> not a bad blocker, right? <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far as a better blocker. But for his uh, route running, um, the ability to uh, always make the big plays, you know, and just being the leader for us this year more than anything is what I've been pleased with Rashad this year. He has to be more of a vocal guy because we don't have a lot of scenes in the skill position area. And for us, Rashad, what I've seen most in him throughout this year is being more of a leader. You know, he always been a consistent guy on the football field, even as a freshman, sophomore, and junior. And his numbers just got better every year. But this year, he had to step up and be a leader. And that's the thing. I know it's like asking somebody who your favorite child or son or daughter is and everything, but among your your wide receivers over the years and everything, how, how tough is it going to be to see Rashad go? Well, it's going to be real tough. You know, he's like a son to me. We, we've been together. I remember when he came to camp when he was just in the eleventh grade, and um, we we connected. And it's it's going to be it's going to be hard to watch him go. And um, you know, but at the same time, I'm excited for him because he, he got a bright future ahead of him at the next level, and um, I'm anxious to see him do some good things at the next level. How would you characterize the way you guys use Nick Leary, Nick O'Leary and just in general the type of player that, that he is, the weapon that he is? Uh, he, he's probably got the best ball skills on, on the team. You know, he's, He does such a great job of catching the ball, and, and Jameis has probably got more confidence than him than he do anybody out of the receiver group. And um, as far as what Nick been able to do this year, it's, it's, it's been great, you know. He's a great route runner, and he, you know he understands where he got to get to. You know, he you know he ain't the fastest guy, but he understands what how he got to do to get open with his route running and the position of his body on the different options we put him in. Have you seen teams have more or less success putting a linebacker on him, a safety on him? How do you think? What's the, what's the in your guys' opinion, what matchup would you like? 
I, I like him to have the linebacker on him all the time, <laughs> personally, because that's the least, probably best cover guy on the, on the, on the defensive side. So we always want the linebacker to match up on him.